All right, we're back here on the iWealth Podcast, and we're going to take just a minute. We're going to talk about uh, a comparison of long-term health care uh, insurance, like where you're buying it for 10 years and then it pays off, uh, you know, if you have to go to the nursing home, yeah. versus just straight up investing the money. Hmm. So I want yeah. I want you to t- play out those t- s- two scenarios, right? Right. I'm healthy. I'm 40 years old or 45 years old. A lot of people start to kind of think about it at that point, right? Versus just maybe taking the fifty thousand dollars that you would invest in that and just putting it on a, you know, right, some type of stock or bond or a mutual fund and and yeah. playing it out that way. Yeah. Pros and cons. Talk me through that. Yeah. What you're really talking about is rolling the dice, right? Do I roll the dice that I'm not going to go in a long-term care facility and now I get this money invested and it grows or do I buy a long-term care policy? It's a, it's an interesting situation because if you were to say, let's say that I said the premium is 50 grand over a 10 year period for you to put in a long-term care policy. Okay. So I'm $50,000 in. Yep. So $5,000 a year, you're going to pay for 10 years. Yep. So you can take that and pay it to an insurance company, yep. and that insurance company is going to provide you hypothetically five hundred thousand dollars when you're eighty-five years old to pay for long-term care. Okay. However, at eighty-five, if you're not in long-term care, maybe you can get back your fifty you put in. So you had zero growth between forty-five and eighty-five. Okay. Okay. Or five thousand dollars a year for ten years into the S and P five hundred or a mm-hmm. mutual fund or something, right? Yep. And so. What we run for clients is we show them what's called an internal rate of return okay. on the long-term care benefit. So comparing that bucket of $500,000 of long-term care mm-hmm. versus what that fifty grand would have grown to in the market. Yep. And a lot of times, and this is just hypothetical, but a lot of times when you look at that internal rate of return at 80, 85, you're in that, you're north of 7%. And it's tax-free because it's used for long-term care. So if you knew you were going to go in a long-term care facility, you probably would still buy the long-term care insurance. Mm. But you are rolling the dice that if you put 50 grand in and you die someday and never use long-term care, somebody's going to get back your 50 or call it 60,000, really no growth on it. You'd have been much better off putting that money into an investment and letting that grow. We just don't have the crystal ball today to try to figure out what's going to happen. And so I just think a lot of times long-term care, again, isn't for everybody, but it's another asset class. That's the way I look at it. I personally own it. That's the way I look at it for me. I have some money invested that's not going to grow very much, Mm -hmm. except unless I have a long-term care event. And so to me, it's just another bucket of money, another asset class that's out there that's called cash that provides that benefit. But um, I just don't want to roll the dice that I'm not going to have a long-term care event. And so that's why I wanted to cover myself. And So part of that responsibility then falls onto your kids' shoulders. And so, yeah, you might tie up a little bit of money for a long time. But the reality is, is you don't, you're not asking your kids, hey, will you cover for me? Well, and and to that point, Matt, it's not necessarily taking money out of the kids' budget, right? So if you you ran out of money because of long-term care, you would go on Medicaid, and mm-hmm. then the state would pay for you to be there. It wouldn't go back to your kids. However, I have clients that want to give money to their kids when they're dead mm-hmm. and want to make sure there's a bucket of money there for them when they're dead. Mm-hmm. And so if that's the case, if they own long-term care, it helps preserve that bucket or think of the farmland, preserve the farmland that you don't have to sell and give to a nursing home if you have something in place. So. Now I might have somebody. I might have another couple that don't care or don't have kids, and say I don't want long term care. If I lose it, if all my money goes to long term care, it goes to long term care, and I'm fine with that. So yeah. yeah, it's not. But but you are right. So you're talking about the time value of money study, mm-hmm. and and if we knew what was going to happen when you're 85, we would know the answer to your question originally. Um, so it's just whether you want to hedge your bet with some insurance or whether you want to roll the dice and maybe all and that part money of it goes can be away. genes too. And looking at the other people that have yeah. come before you and your yeah. family, I should be going. asking like, what's the history of your family? Do yep. you smoke? I should be asking you questions like that <laughs> and then tell you whether you need long-term care or not. Yeah. Well, I think the takeaway to this is it's specific to the person's situation. Yeah. I mean, I think that's really what you're telling me at the end of the day. For sure. All right. Well, thank you. And uh, we'll see you back here next time. You bet. Thanks, Matt.